One of the most common suggestions for fighting corruption is to raise public sector wages. Let's look at this idea a little more closely. Pretty much everyone's against corruption, but the tough question is how to move from a corrupt society to a non-corrupt society. Singapore, in fact, has done that. After World War II, Singapore had a reputation as being quite a corrupt place. Today, and indeed for decades, Singapore has had the reputation of being one of the least corrupt countries in the world. Part of their recipe was to raise public sector wages and have very tough monitoring and punishment programs for public sector officials who were corrupt. South Korea has done something similar. But can this recipe be applied more generally? There's an interesting paper called Corruption and the Rate of Temptation. It was originally written for the IMF, but it was then published in the Journal of Development Economics. Let's see what that paper has to say. This paper starts with the idea of what is called an efficiency wage, an idea which has been developed by Joseph Stiglitz. The notion of an efficiency wage is fairly simple. It means that if you don't pay people very much, they'll do the wrong thing, they'll shirk, they'll take bribes, whatever, because they're not really afraid of being fired. If they're fired, they can go and get another job that pays them more or less the same, maybe even more. But if you pay people really quite a bit, that's called the efficiency wage, they will be more likely to obey you, less likely to shirk, and less likely to be corrupt. So perhaps one of the solutions to public sector corruption is to pay public sector officials an efficiency wage and then tell them not to be corrupt. The results of this paper indicate that an efficiency wage approach may indeed work. For instance, an increase in the ratio of civil service to manufacturing pay is associated with an improvement in the corruption index. This doesn't prove that the change in pay is what made the corruption index better, but it is indicative that there may be some kind of relationship. That said, it's not actually that easy to eradicate corruption altogether, or nearly so. This would require a civil service wage nearly three to seven times higher than the manufacturing wage. Uh, that's actually unrealistic. There are only a few countries in the world which have a ratio of civil service wages to manufacturing wages of about two to three, much less three to seven. So this implies that while higher wages may help eliminate corruption, it's really very hard for that to be your only tactic. A government may not be able to afford those higher wages, or the public may judge those higher wages for the bureaucrats as being unfair. The authors also caution that increases in wages do not have an immediate effect on corruption. That is, it's only when that wage increase has been established for some period of time that it seems to be effective. Finally, the authors indicate that civil service wages are highly correlated with measures of the rule of law and the quality of bureaucracy. This evidence should not be taken as final, but it really does seem to indicate there's something to the efficiency wage approach when it's combined with monitoring and punishment for wrongdoing. That is, there are possible ways out of the corruption trap.